Last week, me and my girlfriend went on a five-day trip with Kendall's Cook MQ3 360 camera. Here is what I was able to achieve with it. Alright, I hope you enjoyed my first attempt at a cinematic 360 camera montage. To be honest with you, I'm a bit surprised because I didn't expect a 360 camera to work so well for the stuff that I do with my cameras, which is similar to what you saw in the beginning sequence of this video. But I was wrong, 360 cameras are actually super fun if you put in the effort to learn how to use them properly, which is exactly what I'm going to show you next. I'll go over settings, exposure methods, reframing, and color correction to achieve the best results results with a 360 camera. I'm going to use the Cook MQ3 for this guide, but the principles in this video should work with pretty much any 360 camera. Starting with the settings, I set the resolution and frame rate to 5.7K 30p. I usually shoot in 25p, but unfortunately the Q3 does not support it. Regardless, I recommend using the highest possible resolution to get the best results when it comes to image quality. Next, I set the color to Pro. I did a slight comparison to to the standard color option and found out that it delivers much more natural looking results. If you don't have the pro color option on your Q3, that's because you need to upgrade to the latest firmware, which I highly recommend doing as it improves the overall performance of the camera and also adds additional cool features. I'll leave a link down below on how to install it on your Q3. Now finally I set the auto stop record temperature to high to get longer recording times before the camera overheats and the anti flicker to 50 hertz because I live in a PAL country. Now let's talk about exposure and white balance. I recommend using manual settings as much as possible with any camera for that matter to get the absolute best results. Here is what I used with the Cam Q3. Starting with white balance, I mainly use the 5600 Kelvin white balance because I was mostly shooting in daylight, but I would change it based on the scene. For example, I would set it to around 4000 Kelvin in low light and 6500 Kelvin in a shadowy scene. As for exposure, I mainly relied on shutter speed to adjust it, barely touching the ISO. I mostly kept the ISO at 100 to minimize noise in the image as much as possible. However, if I was shooting in low light, I would bump the ISO to 400 or even 800. Now to judge if I'm properly exposed or not, I just use the built-in display on the Kukam Q3. From my personal experience with this camera, it's pretty accurate when it comes to judging exposure. Now because this is a 360 camera, you'll have to make some sacrifices when exposing your shots, especially in contrast scenes, because 360 cameras don't have the widest dynamic range out there, so you'll have to carefully decide whether to expose for the highlights or shadows. I usually expose for the highlights because I think it delivers the most pleasing results, but in some cases, exposing for the shadows makes more sense. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that you should treat this camera the same way you treat a normal 
camera when it comes to exposure don't try to expose for everything around you unless you're shooting in a wide open scene like a beach for example where the light is equally even just try to expose for the part where your subject is located and the rest is not that important a couple of other important things i want to mention first of all you don't always have to use manual settings if you're doing a lot of action sports of vlogging or shooting in a complex scene i would recommend using automatic settings with the ev compensation set to minus 0 0.3 or minus 0.7 because in most cases ev 0.0 looks way too overexposed second i would recommend not going below a 1 over 150 shutter speed to get the best stabilization performance on any action or 360 camera because they rely on high shutter speeds for optimal stabilization performance with that said let's talk about why you should always use a selfie stick with your 360 camera i have the KuCam q3 travel kit which comes with a 120 centimeter selfie stick but i would recommend getting a longer one or stacking two of them together like i did to be able to create unique drone like shots for example you can extend the selfie stick completely position the camera horizontally to the ground at waist level and start walking backward while tilting the camera up to create a unique drone like reveal shot or you can simply hold the camera above your head while walking for a unique top down shot which you can then reframe to show the scene around you there are many other creative things you can do with a selfie stick and a 360 camera i highly recommend getting one because it will make your life much easier when it comes to getting unique shots let me know if you're interested in me making a video on how to get unique shots with a selfie stick and a 360 camera anyhow let's move on to the next section which is reframing and creating unique camera movement animations or transitions you have two options when it comes to reframing and creating animations with the cool cam q3 the first one is using the cool cam studio app either on the phone or on the computer i mostly use the one on the computer because i prefer to edit on it but if you have a different 360 camera you can use an open source free plugin with davinci resolve called carta vr I'll leave a link below if you want to download it. It's very simple to install. And again, it's completely free and open source. I mainly use it to create unique camera movements and animations. But before I show you how to do it, we need to go to the KuCam Studio app to prepare the files for it. All right, I'm now inside KuCam Studio app on my Mac computer. Let me show you how to import files, use it, export files, and then prepare them for DaVinci Resolve to use with Carta VR to create unique camera animations and transitions. So if you want to import files, you're just going to click on this plus button in here, select your files, select one of the files, and it's going to look like this, a bit weird. You can click on this button in here, to make it look normal and you can also you know scroll around drag the mouse around to see how it looks around you now alternatively you can click on this drop down menu click reframe and start creating keyframes for your video for example you can add a keyframe in here let's do your something like this and then another keyframe in here and your something like this and it's going to move now from left to right basically as you can see it starts moving from left to right but I don't use keyframes inside this application because I do all my animations inside DaVinci Resolve with Carta VR and I'll explain later on exactly why. Also, you can create in and out points with this in and out point. You can add a grid on top of your footage to see if it's framed correctly or not. Now here on the right, we have some other adjustments and options. We have stabilization. I just leave everything in default. I never touch this, but if you want, you can use horizon steady, which I guess is going to keep the horizon leveled. Then you have in here the fringe to remove chromatic aberrations and fringing. You have color correction, which basically is supposed to make the color more natural looking across the entire 360 frame. Then you have optical flow, which has has something to do I guess with the stitching between the two cameras and also dynamic stitching which basically does a bit of a better job when stitching between the two cameras let me show you how it looks so here you can see the stitching line if I'm gonna click this sometimes it works better sometimes it doesn't I don't really touch this that often but you can play around with this and see if it does a better job or not then we also have FPS to change the frames per second on the video I never touch this and finally we have some audio noise reduction adjustments which you can do here but again I don't do it here because I can do all this inside DaVinci Resolve when I'm editing my video finally to export the video you can click on here and select your resolution I recommend using the highest possible resolution 
option. You can select your file format. I recommend using the ProRes format if you want the best image quality with 4 to 2 HQ preset because this will deliver the best image quality, but it will take the most amount of space. It will take actually a lot of space. So if you want to save some space, you can switch to H.265 with bitrate high, but it's not going to deliver as good of image quality as the ProRes HQ file format and bitrate. Then you can rename your file if you want to choose your export location, click export, or you can add it to the queue. You can add it here and it's going to be in here. Now, for example, you're going to go to other file. Let's choose this file. You're going to create in and out point and we'll click export select your resolution select your format and preset name it how you want right and then you can add it to the queue as well and you can add as many of them as you want to export everything at once rather than doing it one by one anyhow let's move on now to davinci resolve and carta vr so i can show you how i create uh, unique animations and transitions all right so here i have three clips on the timeline now let me add the carta vr plugin to show you how to create animations and transitions so after you installed carta vr you have two options on how to use it inside davinci resolve the first option is inside the edit page you can click on this effects panel search for 360 and you will see this carta vr reframe 360 ultra and then you can add it to your clip and start adjusting everything in here. But I do not recommend doing it this way because you cannot add keyframes. I mean, you can add keyframes, but you cannot adjust the speed of the keyframes in here because this plugin is designed to be used inside the Fusion page. So let me show you how it works inside the Fusion page. So to add the plugin in here, you have two options. The first option is again to click the effects panel in here, drop down these tools, click in here, Cartaverse, and you'll see this, and then you put this between these two nodes. And now you have basically the same adjustments. The other option is to close this, delete this and now you can hit shift space on your keyboard and search for Carta and you will see this plugin click add and that's it now after you added this plugin between these two nodes you can start adjusting the parameters on the right the first parameter is for the field of view you can select the field of view you want I usually go for somewhere between 0 0.45 to 0 0.5 so let's see how it looks in here I think I'll stop around here 0 0.48 with this with the pitch you can adjust the tilt of the camera with the yaw you can adjust the pen of the camera with the roll you basically adjust the roll now here under image projection you can basically fix the fisheye distortion not fix but make it look a bit better as you can see it's going to stretch the edges and make everything look like it was shot with a normal camera i usually go to somewhere between 0.85 and 0.95 depends on the shot for this one i'll go somewhere in here i don't touch this tiny planet projection and image output st map i don't touch as well and i don't touch edge settings at all now the final thing that i use here is under settings and motion blur which you can use to add motion blur to the movements you're going to create inside the plugin and i'm going to show you later on exactly how it works so first of all if you don't want to create any animations you can just you know reframe your shot how you want just like so play and you're going to have a shot but the whole point of having a 360 camera in my personal opinion is to create these unique animations so let's go to the beginning in here and create an animation with these uh, diamonds in here with these diamonds you can add keyframes to your shot so let's add keyframes and i'm going to start at the bottom here to create like a reveal shot and once i'm going to reach this point i'm going to tilt it up a bit right let's see how it looks now it's gonna start down and it's gonna bring the camera up just like so now this animation is pretty cool it goes from down here to up here but it stops really abruptly which is something i don't like but luckily for us we can fix it by clicking here on this spline view we can hide this node view in here then we can click on this and now we'll see the curve we've created with these keyframes and animation. We can click in here to see everything. This is basically zoom to fit. And I will see exactly what's happening with our animations. We have the pitch. The green is the pitch. And we have the yaw. And now we can select each point. You see the points in here. So I can select this point and I can click here to create like a smooth ease out. I can do the same thing in here. And also I can do the same thing in the beginning. And now the animation is going to be much smoother. It's going to start slow, go a bit fast, and then end slow as well. So let's see how it looks. 
starts slow goes a bit fast and now it's going to end slow as well looks much better than before and this is the main reason i use carta vr and other cool cam studio because in cool cam studio you cannot really control these animation speeds and so on also you see here this white line you can exactly control it how you want so for example let's go to the pitch one and let's say we're going to want to start really slow but end really fast we can do this kind of a curve and now it's going to start slowly in here and then it's going to end very quickly let's see how it looks start slow start slow and now it's going to start going up now let me show you how to use something like this to create a unique transition and animation with two clips. So now we have two clips and I want to create an animation transition between these two clips. So first of all, I'm going to work on the first bus clip. I'm going to start at the beginning here and I'm going to create some keyframes. I'm going to start with the pitch and I'm going to go up and play with the yaw to make the bus invisible. I want to start from seeing the sky and then it's going to slowly transition to the bus. I'm going to go to somewhere around here see here i'm gonna bring the pitch down somewhere around here and i'm gonna bring the yaw to this side to see the bus like this i think i'm also going to play around with the roll just to make the horizon a bit more straight and i'm going to click here to zoom to fit and instead of clicking each keyframe individually i'm just going to click command a on my keyboard then i'm going to hit shift s which basically going to add a smooth curve to all of the curves at once just like so as you can see so I think it's a bit too far away to the left, so I'm going to bring the yaw a bit here. Let's see how it looks now. And I think I'm going to start a bit quicker on the yaw, so I'm going to adjust the curve. So it starts right away with the yaw and stops here. Now the way I want to transition from this clip to this clip is with a whip transition basically. I want to quickly move it to the right and then from here I'm going to move it quickly from the left to the right. Let me show exactly how to do it. So let's go to the first clip again. So we end up in here. I'm going to hold this frame for a little bit. Let's say to about here. I'm going to click on these diamonds to create more keyframes. And then by the end of the clip I'm going to whip the camera to the right with the yaw. Just like so to here maybe also play around with the roll so now basically the camera is going to go quickly from left to right just like so but it's not really that smooth it goes the same speed i want it to start slow and go really quickly so again i'm going to zoom to fit and adjust this curve in here i'm going to make it something like this so basically it's going to start really slow and then ramp up in speed it goes slowly from left to right and then in the end really quickly Now let's move on to the next clip and I'm basically going to do the opposite thing. I'm going to start in the middle of the roof of the car and then I'm going to whip to the right. Let me show you how to do it. So I'm going to go to the first frame of the clip. I'm going to create keyframes in here and I think I'm going to start somewhere around here. And let's move on to about here and I'm going to position it right here. Now again, I'm going to make this curve a bit smoother. I'm going to make it go really fast in the beginning and then it's going to move a bit slower. So let me adjust this curve in here. Now let's see how it looks. Much better. Let's see how it looks now on the timeline itself. So it starts, starts in here, goes down and then it's going to create this transition. Uh, I can make it a bit faster with the bus. So let's go back to the bus, zoom to fit and make this transition a bit faster in here. Let's see how it looks now. And now it's much better. Now to make it look even better and more seamless, we can go back to the fusion page and remember the motion blur. Here is where you're going to use the motion blur for this kind of fast movements to make them more seamless basically. So I'm going to go to this uh, motion blur effect and as you can see, it basically adds motion blur to the movement. You can adjust the parameters in here. I usually go about 150, 140 with the shutter angle and I increase the quality to about six. Let's move on to the next clip. Put it about here where the movement is happening. Click on the settings, motion blur, adjust everything in here as well. I think something like this looks good. Quality I'm going to increase to also about six. But important thing to know is that this takes a lot of resources from your computer. So you'll have to wait a little bit for Fusion to render everything for you. So let's wait and I'm going to show you exactly how it looks. All right, the computer just finished rendering the files. Let me show you how everything looks like now. So it starts from the top, goes to the middle and then stays here a bit. And one, two, three, boom, 
This is something you cannot do inside the CoolCam Studio app, which is why I mainly use the Carta VR plugin to create these keyframes, animations, and transitions. You have so much more flexibility and it's completely open source and free. I highly recommend using this plugin if you're using a 360 camera. Anyway, let me also show you how I color corrected and color grade one of the clips that I showed in the beginning sequence of this video. All right, so let's take this shot as an example because this is one of my favorite shots I shot with the CoolCam Q3. Anyway, I have here a CST in going from Rec 709 to DaVinci Wide Gamut because this was not shot in log. This camera does not do log footage and I'm working always with all of my footage in a DaVinci Wide Gamut color space. Then we also have in here an output color space transform that goes from DaVinci Watt Gamma to Rec. 709, Rec. 709A because I'm using a Mac computer. Anyway, in here, I adjusted the exposure because when you transform the footage from Rec. 709 to DaVinci Watt Gamma, it usually reduces the exposure. So just bumped it up a little bit. Then I slightly tweaked the white balance just a little bit. I think I reduced the temperature to minus 100 in here and also added some tint. This is before and after. It's barely noticeable to be honest because I nailed the white balance in camera, which is why I recommend using manual settings. Then I added some saturation. Then I added this window to make the exposure on the car a bit better. And I used a magic mask to do it. So as you can see, it's basically tracking the car in here. So this is the before and after, just a minor difference, but it's really adding to making the car pop from the background. And here I added a HSL curve just to reduce the saturation from the red colors, as you can see. Makes the reds a bit more natural looking. So here's the saturation. I just reduced the saturation in the reds and also I reduced the saturation in the darkest parts of the frame just to make the footage look a bit more balanced, if you will. And here, finally, I added this lift adjustment. Zoom in here. This is the before and after. As you can see, it looks a bit more smooth, a bit more foggy, if you will. I kind of like it. If you don't, you don't have to do it, but that's what I like to do. Okay, and finally, I added my favorite plugin, the Hanser, which basically I used as a lot, and it added a film emulation on top of this footage. I used the Kodak Supra 100 with some minor adjustments in here, and basically it's all added after the color space transforms because it's meant to be used in the Rec. 709 color space. This is before and after, before and after, and here is how the clip looks like. All right, I guess this is it for today. I hope you find this video to be informative and useful. If you have any questions, comments, and whatnot, let me know down below. Thank you, Kando, for sponsoring this video, and I guess I'll see you again soon. Peace.